few weeks ago, while we were traveling around Devon, this door failed on us. First of all, we couldn't open it. And then once we actually forced it open, we weren't able to close it. Managed to figure out what it was and fixed it. However, I kind of didn't lube it up properly. And uh, there's a few other things that I want to do with this door, uh, which I'll be showing you in this video. Now, Herman, our motorhome, is a 1998 Heimer uh, B564, but a lot of Heimers have, this similar, have a similar door. What I'm about to do is something I don't look forward to. This will be the fourth time I've done this. This is the main door card, I suppose, and that all needs to come off um, so that I can get to the locking mechanism. The second problem I have is that just round here, this is part of the handle. I suppose you could grab this. Well, we do grab this. This is a handle as well, but there's a kind of ridge here which you can grab. And over time, that's actually weakened and split. So I want to fix that and strengthen it with fiberglass. The third problem that I want to see if I can solve is this. Now, this is the door stop. So it stops the door from uh, opening too much and hitting the wing mirror. Uh, but the thing is, as you can see, that is bent just there and uh, that occurred when the wind took the door and blew it back and bent that part there. So I want to be able to see if I can bend that back because at the moment, every time we open the door, this part, the hinge actually catches on the door card and makes a little click. Um, probably nothing major, but it, it is annoying and I really would like to fix. So what do I mean by having fixed it and want to go back to and lube it up? Well, if I put the key in, you might not be, I mean, I'm not putting much pressure on here, but you really can't tell how stiff that is. It's functioning right, it's fine, but it's quite stiff in there. When the door was not working properly, I noticed that this plunger here, this is actually opens a door, whatever you call it, you pull it up to open, of course, you know how to use a door, uh, it was all the way down a lot further than it would normally go almost level with the uh, the top of the door here so i knew something was not quite right there's also a little tiny lock washer which fails it doesn't stop the the screw that's going through it, it doesn't stop it from undoing uh, so instead what i did was put a bit of lock thread on it that seemed to solve it however it hasn't got the lock thread on it anymore so I want to put lock thread back on the, on the screw and also put a new lock washer on it. So therefore it shouldn't come undone again and you know, have the barrel falling out and uh, this door jamming or not working. I've got to get this off and I'm not looking forward to it. The first thing I need to do is remove all the screws. There's two in the handle, there's one in the, uh, the door release there's a couple in the door stop and there's three down the right hand side of the door here. And because we're talking about using screws and other small parts, I've laid down some matting. So if anything drops on the floor, I'm able to see it, hopefully. Hopefully it won't bounce too far. Or a better idea was probably be using a sheet. The door stop is particularly tricky because you can't really get a lot of tools behind here. There's a screw this side and a nut the other side. And there's a huge potential of dropping something. Uh, but not only that, this metal bar here that goes into the door, that is sprung. So when you release it, you get a whack on the knuckles. Like that. You bastard. I've just seen the nut disappear. Ah, found it. So good using the mat. We just slide that in. Next, the window winder switch, we just push up. And uh, you can then disconnect it. Like that. Now the final thing, uh, we need to get this down. The only way of doing that is by actually shutting the door. But if I shut the door, I'm not going to be able to work on it. It's going to be locked. 
So I need to fool the door into thinking that it's closed. And the way we do that is using a screwdriver. So you see that bit there? We just need to pretend the door is being closed like that. Okay, so now the door is closed. Now we should be able to just push this down. There you go. So now the door is locked and I should be able to get this door card off. It is all loose. Now this is the bit that I hate. Now the reason I hate it is because, I mean, you can, I mean, you can see that it's all floppy, uh, but it's now connected by being squeezed down the side of the door, all the way around the top, all the way around here. So you can see here, that's what I mean by squeezing the door. So this is the white part is the door, and then and this is the door card, this yellowy bit piece, which I'm trying to remove. Now, it's a bit of a tight squeeze, there's a bit of a wedge, and there is a risk of that, something along this door breaking, which is the bit I'm, I dread. Getting it back in seems to be a lot easier. Anyway, wish me luck. So what I'm gonna do is use a few screwdrivers to get around the edge here and then prise it out. Well, that was easy. That just unclipped all of that. Now, the top part is the moment it could snap. Oh, almost there. Yes. Oh, right. The worst part is over, I think. <laughs> now, what I've got to do is prise it out of along the strip here, which is normally quite easy. What I'm going to do now is fix this crack here and maybe a few of the others as well with fiberglass matting. Okay, so the door has now been fixed. All the fiberglass points that I wanted to repair have been repaired. So there's the handle. And I also wanted to repair two screw holes. There's one and there's the other. So I'm gonna let the fiberglass dry on the door overnight. And uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna see if I can sort this mechanism out. I don't pretend to understand everything about this mechanism, uh, but I'll, I'll explain a few things that I do understand, or just show you around really. So this here is the inner door mechanism. You pull that to open the door. There's a cable here which pulls onto this. Uh, then this wheel here also um, has this cable, which is the lock itself. Okay, so if I pull this up, see now the door is unlocked. But of course it's still closed. Remember I, uh, I've fed this thing back, this latch here, so the door is still closed in the closed position now we're not going to touch anything on this side but this screw here holds the barrel in the door there's a lock washer there's a washer and then this mechanism here which the lever is connected to and then right under there is a spring that we're going to lose <laughs> i'm sure it's going to ping off somewhere but we don't want it to so we, we need that uh, spring and uh, i just want to lube it all up and there's a, there's a ratchet kind of a bar behind here. You can't really see, it's just all black at the moment. Uh, but that will come, we'll remove that and we'll uh, lube that up as well. All right, so please excuse the camera angle because that is as best as I can get it. Uh, I'm gonna unscrew. Now that was not very tight. So it was a good thing that I have done, started to do this. Right, so I'm gonna need to take this off. And when I do that, there's a spring that I want to not lose. I've got my th thumb on the spring. Right, there you go. There's a spring. I'm going to take that out. And there's a tiny little hole there. Just there. 
and a tiny little hole here. That's where the spring goes in. This is the slidey thing, which goes up and down. I want to take that out as well, because I want to get behind there. I took it off while we were in Devon. I want to get behind there and do some lubing. It fell out last time, I can't get it out now. So it just slides up and down, but I want to lube it up. So as you can see, the lock barrel uh, is easily freed now. Uh, and to remove it, you would need to undo this spring, take the spring off and then just push it through. Just like that. And there is the barrel. And the reason I've taken this out is so that I can lube this up as well. Now I have the barrel out, I wanted to show you how to actually remove the lock mechanism in case you needed to do that. So that is what goes in the door. Um, I have another barrel here. Uh, this is if you had to purchase one and you wanted to replace what you had in your motorhome, uh, this is what they look like and this is the key for it. So you can see it goes all the way in, comes all the way out. Now these are the, the pins which activate when uh, you put the key in. Uh, they actually go up and down uh, but the, the important one I think is this bronzy type one here, this goldish coloured one on the end. That locks the barrel into this black casing and allows the the barrel to move around. Now this is important because uh, this here is a um, master key and it allows you to remove the barrel from the actual casing here <clears throat> and it works like this. So you just push it in and then it drops down, not much, it drops down a little bit and allows you to remove the whole barrel. Now uh, you, we get different keys and different um, master keys here and you just pull that out like that and it raises up a bit. I don't know if you can tell, you can see that, but that's how that all works. So if you needed to remove the barrel from a door enclosure like this, or maybe, and this is what I did in the past, remove a barrel from the water filler cap, then you're gonna need the master key to extract it. Inserting the barrel back into the enclosure you just need to put your key in the barrel and then push it in. Right, so I've put the spring back on uh, and I've just wanted to show you how it goes on. So we have one end of the spring just there and the other end just there. Now, they need to go in a certain place uh, and they're actually connected to the barrel which is going through the middle. So when I turn the key, it actually springs back like, like so. Okay, now you'll also notice the uh, brass key here, this thing here which I was showing you on the other barrel. Now that is now wedged in place and it won't, it, it's holding the whole barrel in place. Now what I was thinking of doing is taking this spring off and then putting the barrel back in the door and then putting the spring back on, which I thought would be probably impossible since it's quite cramped. But I realised that as I'm turning the key, of course, the spring is shrinking. Now at this point, I can't actually take the key out. But if I turn the barrel, if I turn the key, and then I can actually extract the key. There you go. All right. So now the key is out. Now it's all nice and shrunk. I can probably, I think I can put that into the door. So you may be asking what lubrication I'm going to be using. It's lithium grease in a can, and I'm just going to spray it on there. So I've lubed up the back of this. Okay. So one last thing before I put this back in the door is that this hole here is where the screw goes in, which holds it all together. Now, when you screw it in, you're screwing it into the barrel. And if you screw it in too tight, then this brass pin that holds the barrel in place is gonna bend and snap. So you can't bend, tighten this too much. 
also there's these three lugs which need to be aligned with the door on the opposite side. So I'm going to now put that in and see how we get on. Spring in next, goes in the hole there. I need to line up the spring with this tiny little hole down there. See that tiny little hole? That one there on the left. That's in. That's now... Oh, the spring's fallen out. Oh, God damn it, it's gone down there. Oh, you b Right, well, I managed to find the spring. Right, let's have another go at this. All I need now is my screw. So that's, uh, the spring is coming through this little notch here, little hole. It's all assembled, I just need that screw. Okay, so the screw, I've got lock thread on it and a new rattle washer just in between the there. Right, don't want this too tight, otherwise you'll break the barrel. Right, so to test this, we need to pretend the door is shut and then we can lock it from the inside using the plunger here. There we are. Now we get the keys. Brilliant. Locks as well. Unlocks. Oh, that is nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. And it springs back. It's never sprung back before. Lovely. Oh, I love that. That's all done and dusted. I just need to wait for the door to dry and I can put that back on. In the meantime, I suppose I can take a look at that door stop, see if I can straighten that. I can't straighten it while it's still attached. I just realised it looks like it's screwed on. Oh, I don't think that is. I think it's still quite firm on there. Oh, that's not moving. Nope. Back in they go. Well, the door is now ready, all fixed up. All I've got to do now is put the door card on. And that is looking like a really good solid repair, if you ask me. What do you think? The problem we're going to have now by putting the door card back on is this hole here. This is where the door lock pull comes through. And that's a bit fiddly. It should be just a case of just doing it in reverse. I've got to do this silly little thing there. Uh, there you go. Now the door's out. This is why I don't want to keep doing it. No. Right, done it. There you go. Now, don't forget to pass the window wires through. Oh, you're kidding me. All right, the window, <laughs> okay. and I'll pull that up so it doesn't fall out. Don't forget to push the door jam through as well. All right, I think everything's in place. Now I can just uh, try and clip it in. that sound oh my goodness I never want to remove this ever again now we have the deadly springy 
doorstop. Right, so of course as I'm applying, putting this on, it's going to be sprung. Oh, you pig! I just dropped the nut. There it is. Ow! Found it. Wow. <laughs> With these glasses, I've got the eyes of a hawk. Done. So now we are done. Look at that. Look how smooth that is now. That is amazing. And it's the key springs back, which it's never done. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.